Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Tuesday night, back live at 7.30. It's like I never left, but I left for a long time or something like that. But anyway, I figured I, I got books to show. Not a ton of books this week, but I had a few really nice things that I found, and I wanted to share them. And yeah, I, I felt like talking about some of my classic favorite reads, and I had an art piece to show, and I just want to talk about you know some of the insanity that's going on in the comic book world right now with speculation and all that stuff and i'm just kind of like what can i read and do that doesn't have anything to do with speculation like what if i just want to read the comic book so I, I decided to dig out a few options in case anyone had the same question so stay tuned for that but before we get into it i do want to say a special shout out to chris barrett he is in the chat he says currently working on a new post for my new blog so i'll be in and out Chris, I got to be honest, I didn't even know you're working on a new blog. If you want to link that down below somewhere uh, where people can find your blog and what it's all about, feel free. You got the wrench, bud. So I'm, I'm curious now on what is Chris Barrett blogging about? So hopefully we will find that out today. So as usual here on the Tuesday Night live stream, we'll get started with last week's haul and what in the world did I find and what did I attempt to read for the new comics this week and and once again, I got to be perfectly honest, like I, I bought stuff last week and there wasn't much I was thrilled with. So we'll just go ahead and get into it and get it over with. We got Teen Titans Academy. This will be the last Teen Titans book I buy uh, from this 2021 line of whatever DC is doing. Uh, so done with that. Kind of cool cover, I guess. They're really going after this Red X or Red X character. I'm not sure if he cleans your drains for you or something, but. I'm, I'm done. That's the last one of those I'll be buying. Um, went ahead and got, it's always good to get an extra blank, especially if it's a different type of blank. So I got a Joker number one for the nice green cover. You know, if cons ever do come back, it'd be nice to get something on this, except you, you can even see it on my screen. There is a small ding right there. So it's, it's going to be a cheap sketch probably. Uh, but I'll go ahead and put that in the pile of blanks up there. Um, went ahead and got this TMNT. 115. This is the Kevin Eastman cover. I went ahead and talked about the read on the last Tuesday night live stream, so I won't talk too much further with it. Uh, but yeah, like it's a really cool bebop and rock study playing guitars cover, which stems into what happens in the issue, basically. Um, so yeah, I don't need to talk too much more about that. Complete cover by for me, uh, Patrick Gleason. People are all of a sudden realizing the talent Patrick Gleason has been for like years um, with these like single color covers that he's been doing lately with like the Spider-Man, I think it was issue 35 with the black and white Venom. Uh, so of course now we have the red, black and white carnage. Uh, so yeah, Gleason, he's been phenomenal since at least I've known him from his green lantern core stuff going into his Batman and Robin stuff with Peter Tomasi. And then eventually to the Spider-Man stuff with Marvel, but Patrick Gleason, I'm glad he's finally getting some recognition uh, he definitely deserves it. He, he has been an awesome artist for quite a while, and he's definitely finally getting the love he deserves. And I also picked this up because Patrick Gleason uh, got the Alien number one, uh, his version of the cover. I still think it's a great cover, um, even though didn't care too much about the story. I've actually heard a lot of people say that in the community, that it's just bland. It's not necessarily a bad story. Like Sometimes the best thing about the Alien movies is just like, how is Sigourney Weaver's character going to overcome one alien, two aliens, a whole army of them and whatnot. And then this one gives you the drama of Wayland Yutani. And you're just like, eh, who cares? But it is Salvador LaRocca is the artist on this book. So at least the art is top notch. So you're at least getting good art on the cover and on the inside of the alien book. Uh, went ahead and got Superman 29. Once again, uh, another cover by base. I tried to read the story. Um, and unfortunately, I got to say it was just bland. It's just... Like Jonathan Kent, uh, there's something him and his father Superman were taken care of in space, and somehow like there's a substance introduced that basically Superman, being 100% Kryptonian, is basically allergic to, and then Jonathan is not because he's half human and half Kryptonian. So it kind of presents Jonathan having to have a conversation with his dad that you know, like you have to leave some things up to me, even though you're Superman, you can't be doing everything like. I can help you even when you can't help. So it was kind of interesting there, but 
that's all they did over a course of like 22 to 24 pages. I feel like they could have did a little bit more, but said cool wraparound cover. I really like John Timms' art. I hope DC does more with John Timms um, because I think he's one of their better artists that's in their wheelhouse right now. Before I keep going, I do want to say hi to a few people in the chat. Uh, Shout out Chris Barrett. He put his blog in the chat. So after I'm done with this stream, I'll definitely have to go check that out. But check out Chris Barrett's blog right there. We got Stay Puff, 1983. What is going on, Puff? One of the, the king of Instagram right there. I always call him that. Stay Puff, 1983. One of my favorites. We also got Mars Comics. How's it going, Mars? He says, hello. Hope everyone is well. And then Chris says his blog is like Seinfeld, but in blog form and from his head. So, you know, it's going to be crazy and dangerous, I'm sure. So definitely check out Barrett's blog. I'm I'm definitely curious to see what he's typing up and going on there. Also pick this one up, Superman or Batman Superman 16. Um, once again, there's supposed to be a bunch of like first appearances. So I was like, hey, kind of cool cover. Why can't I pick this up? And average story, once again, just once again, just another read was what it was. Didn't do much for me. I, I gotta be honest. So probably won't be getting issue 17. I'm still collecting these, these team and T best ofs. I just kind of like the cover set at this point. Uh, you get Michelangelo here. So once again, the 599 price tag does seem you know, to chase some people off, but you get a, as you can see there by the thickness of the book, you get a lot of content. It's a lot of reprinting, of course, but you get like, I think it's the best of, or the Michelangelo micro series uh, from the Mirage stuff. Then the Christmas special, they had Mirage. And then I think there's like a macro and a micro series, whatever all of that means. Uh, and this as well from the IDW stuff. Uh, so if you just want a nice quality read, it's basically like, what, $1.25? ish i can't do math right now sorry long day of work about a dollar plus per comic in this because you're getting like four comics so dollar fifty that's what i was looking for dollar fifty a read but you just gotta get a bundle of four reads here but this is the fourth turtle one they're doing they're continuing a splinter i think i've heard rumblings of a shredder so they're gonna keep doing these best ofs i'm not sure if casey would follow and Bebop and Rocksteady and you know the rest. So they, I, I could see them just making a whole line of these, but really fun to have at least the main four turtles on there. Like I said, I don't know how long we keep paying $5.99 for because I do own a good chunk of what they're reprinting in these books at the end of the day, or I can access it digitally for more or less free on Comixology Unlimited. Uh, here's a new one, Shadecraft number one. I put this on my polls because I did want the Jock variant cover. Um, once again, not too bad of a read, but I feel like I've read a story very similar to this before. Kind of remind me of the darkness actually, where you just have a main character and somehow like, a like, I think in this instance, it's like her brother's the main character and somehow like there's a shadow demon, some sort that possesses this character and lingers around them. And eventually this character uses this, this demon shadow power to their advantage, whether it to be a hero or what have you, like I said, a very in vain of the darkness, in my opinion, but the twist is, I think it turns out at the end, like somehow the shadow demon that you see Jock draw on his cover is her brother, something like that. I think that's what they tried to tell me in the last splash panel, but could be interesting. If you like darkness, you might like Shadecraft. Uh, but yeah, Jock cover that I haven't heard too many people talk about. I think that pretty much does it for my current reads uh, from last week. Uh, let's check out what's going on in the chat. Uh, Stay Puff, he said, I know he's getting those TMNT books. He says, love those TMNT books, quality books uh, with reprints. Absolutely. Uh, we got Ricky Marks, that. What's going on, Ricky? Nice to see Ricky in the chat as usual. We got Who Dat, comics and movies. Yep, I'm still real, man. He says, hey, Seawood, did I miss why you are selling books? Uh, you did not, actually. So I'm just kind of going over the haul. And then I think after the haul, then I'm going to talk about, you know, why I'm selling a little bit more because. You know, big shout out to uh, those people who have been joining us on our first two Comic Core uh, sales we've had. We've been trying to do like Saturdays at noon, just whenever we can all get a Saturday off between me, the Great Legend Show, Drew Manchu, baby. Um, we're just having a claim sale. Um, we got a lot of inventory, basically. So I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a few. Uh, but no, I have not talked about that yet. Uh, so just a couple eBay pickups. Actually, you know what? I just forgot about this little stack here. I got some more books last week. Three more books. And most of these were cover buys. And I flipped through them once again. I'm not reading a lot. I don't think I have a single Marvel 
on my pull list right now. I still have no Marvel on my pull list. I feel so bad, but you know, if I have an unlimited subscription, so like I could just wait six months and read this for no extra charge. Um, so yeah, but these are the type of books I've been getting from Marvel are these Jim Bartels. Um, holy crap. I'm glad once again, just like, uh, Pat Gleason, people are realizing how awesome Jen Bartell is. She's been one of my favorite artists for quite a while now uh, with her work on Blackbird on Image. If you like these covers, definitely check out Blackbird from Image. She does all of the art over there. Uh, not the greatest story in that one, but it's a beautiful book. Uh, but I got the Black Cat Jen Bartell. Had to get the White Queen, of course. Um, and then maybe my favorite of the three, I uh, picked up Silk. I think my She-Hulk uh, that I got a couple weeks back, still my complete favorite of the four I've bought so far, but I'd say the Cindy Moon cover is a close second, but they're all good so far. I'd, I'd passed on the Ghost Rider one just because I'm not at all familiar with that character, and I know there's been a few others. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to get the whole line. I'm just going to get the ones I really enjoy. Um, did get these off eBay um, because someone said this book may blow up, and I kind of wanted this cover for a minute. Um, and that's for issue number five. I think this is supposed to be a Lady Loki appearance, which I think that character may be in that show. Maybe. I don't know. But I decided to go ahead and grab this just in case for like cover price because uh, I really like J. Scott Campbell, obviously. And it's a J. Scott Campbell Thor variant cover, which is badass. So I decided to go ahead and pick that up. And then the seller also had this listed on their page. I'm I really do want to read and collect this run, but those first couple issues are the ones that blow up. Um, I just had this. I'm like, I may as well bundle something else with the shipping if I'm going to buy a book from this person. So I just bundled this in with the shipping for basically cover price as well. It's all new Wolverine issue number three. It's a second print variant. Um, well, I said I would have probably got the first print if it was available, but I was like, you know what? People love these second prints. If I don't enjoy it, I could always just get rid of it later. No problem. Uh, so I got the second print of issue number three. And then going back to what I found at my comic shop, along with some of this other stuff, I actually got a, a really nice haul from my shop last week, actually. So I did have a $10 voucher just because for every $100 you spend with them, you basically get $10 and a coupon. Um, so I decided to put that toward this bundle of books. So uh, never see these ever anywhere. So I was like, you know what? He's charging almost what you would pay online. But with that $10 voucher and with the quality of this book, I decided to go for it. And that's Thanos Quest 1 and 2. I've been told uh, by many a Marvel fan that I need to read Thanos Quest. I'm probably still going to read it digitally because these are square bound and I don't want to crease the spine. Uh, but I got issue 1 and 2. And yeah, the, the, the owner of the shop was telling me how quality and you know, how great these books look. The only kind of bad news on these is I'm pretty sure they're second printings. Um, but, you know, based on my research, that people don't care a ton about the printing of this. They're just looking for the book. Obviously, it, it is, you know, a little bit more valuable for the first printing than the second, like most cases. But um, these are probably like 9.6, uh, all day. Like, they're, they're very high quality. Um, like I said, I pretty much got the pair for $25 after that, that coupon I applied to it. So not too bad. Um, a little bit more than I like to pay for things, obviously, but $12.50 a book for those. That's still well, well worth, uh, what they are, you know, selling for. And then meanwhile, they also had, uh, this bundle of books, uh, right next to it. I'm surprised I was actually able to snag these because I didn't actually go to a new comic book day on Wednesday. I went on Thursday. So pretty much. All of this type of stuff is usually picked over if I go on Thursdays, but he, he still had some good stuff. So for, I think, a dollar and a quarter an issue, I picked this bundle up. So I got New Avengers, or I'm sorry, Young Avengers Volume 2, 1 through 6. So that's the second run, the uh, Gillen and McKelvey era, which I'd say don't sleep on these books either because there's a lot of, like, it's a great story. They add a great new characters to it. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. They add in, you know, Kid Loki in that. Uh, you get America Chavez uh, as a follow-up to that other miniseries she was in. And then you just get, you know, good quality stuff with the characters from the first volume, basically. Uh, so, actually, I think it was one through five. My apologies. I don't know why I thought issue six was in there. Don't ask me why. So, I got issue one through five. I think it was, actually, I think it was ten bucks. So, like I said, after work math, not the best thing to do. Um, so, the probably the find of the week easily for me is I was looking... 
for a, a book for Comic Man Andy because he had his uh, top 10 of 2021 list he posted up. And he was still looking for Saga Issue 1, uh, Image First 2014 printing, something like that. Um, so the, it turns out, anyway, the same day I was looking for that book, he bought it in a 9.8 and got it shipped to him already and already showed it on one of his videos before I could even mention that I was looking for that for him. So congrats, Andy, you found your book. Uh, but in looking for that book, because, you know, he has like a little section of image first. So, you know, I, he has a big section of Saga image first. He bought a ton of them. And I was flipping through them and I noticed there is one image first that doesn't have image first on the site. So I pull it out and it was this for cover price. So before everyone at home goes, oh, my God, you got that for two ninety nine. This is a, a modern reader copy all day. It is not in great condition. Um, there is chipping and warping on the side. You can kind of see what's going on there. This camera is on point today. That's nice. Um, there's a little bit of pull on the staple even. So, you know, even in a reader copy for $2.99, I would have been stupid to leave this there. So anytime I can get a, a Saga first printing issue number one for cover, you better believe I'm taking it. So as soon as I get home, put this in one of those full back Mylars. So yeah, this is actually my second copy. But like I said, it is it's beat. You can tell there's like a water stain right there and a couple other little water spots. So what a pressing and cleaning would possibly do to this book. I'm not sure, but I just figured I'd buy it as a reader copy because I, I saw I couldn't leave it for $2.99. So that immediately went in the stack. So there is that. Um, and then before I keep showing the last couple books, I do want to say hi to Mr. Gretzky, 9966. He says, hi there. When is Modern Men coming back? Uh, we're still trying to figure that out, actually. I messaged the guys yesterday. Um, we're mainly just trying to figure out a day. Uh, we're probably going to record the next one. Sorry, Chris Barr. I know you like live better than recorded, but there's just really not a Monday in the foreseeable future where I don't work early the following Tuesday. It's kind of the same thing for Andy, and I think the same thing for Drew. Um, so we're probably going to record the next one. We're thinking about continuing reading the Ed Brubaker Captain America. I almost completely forgot we read that already in January. Um, so I think we may just read volume two of that run. Drew also proposed we read Planet Hulk. And then I feel like there was one more read thrown. I think we've thrown around Age of Apocalypse repeatedly. So if anyone has any modern men suggestions, definitely pop them in the chat. Put them in the comments after this video. Chris says... If they don't have adult characters in the Avengers, I'm not reading it. I don't want to deal with kids doing things they shouldn't be doing. I mean, I get that. But part of the appeal of like Teen Titans, Young Avengers, even Runaways is just not only getting a chance to see these characters grow up on the pages and, you know, deal with having to, you know, become from a child to an adult and deal with all that stuff. They're having to do superhero stuff as well on top of it. So. You just have to find the right book to read, basically, because sometimes it does get a little, you know, CW-esque, I guess, you know, if you will. But there are some great examples of, you know, using younger characters in team books. Some very good examples, in my opinion. Uh, Who that says I have to complain to someone. CGC has my team and team magazines for 61 days and my modern books for 51 days. And those are business days. Dude, I know the feeling, man. Like, I don't know if you've got a chance to watch my video for a few weeks back. Uh, where I, I think you probably were there. I think you actually popped in, in the later part of that feed, actually, where I submitted my first CGC submission ever, and they still haven't put those books in any type of registry. I've actually sent uh, some Nintendo Power magazines to them since uh, that I didn't really, you know, do a live stream on or anything. I just sent them the books, and I see they shipped, but zero has happened since the shipment. So I'm not anticipating getting these books back for like until fall. So I'm really trying to put them in the back of my mind, but I have a lot of my babies in that box. So I could just see them, you know, curling the spines and pressing in ways they shouldn't be pressed because they're in a priority box right now. And ugh, it just pains me to think about because I got that giant size in that box. Uh, my highly graded, hopefully highly graded first carnage is in that box. There's a ton. You can go watch that video on the rewind. And yeah, that's my that's kind of my thought. It's if it's not fall, you will see those books until Christmas. Yeah, you, you're probably right. I'm just trying to be optimistic, but yeah, so far it's not working. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the last two books, and Huda, I think you'll like these. 
Um, I did manage to um, see at the right time that the WonderCon website put up the Last Ronin Issue 2 uh, variant up for a limited window. Like, I think it was the weekend before last. Uh, so I ended up getting a couple copies of the Last Ronin Issue 2 WonderCon variant because it is a pretty badass Eastman cover. So I'm not trying to go after all the variants, and I definitely don't like going after store variants. But when it comes to Kevin Eastman and Ninja Turtles, if there's a Kevin Eastman turtle variant I can get, for a retail price, I'm probably going to go ahead and, and buy it. Uh, so definitely happy to get this because I saw what happened to the New York Comic Con Eastman number one. So far, that's unattainable. Maybe I can use one of these to eventually get that once the last Ronin buzz completely dies down. Uh, but yeah, luckily, I just, I think, you know, shout out to two brothers. They put it on their Instagram that, hey, it's back up. And by the time I got my order in and then like, oh, man, Andy, no, because he's a turtle guy, too. Um, they were already sold out by the time he saw it, unfortunately. So let me know, Andy, if you need that still. <laughs> and then I do have, since I got Houdat's attention, I do have one more thing to show you. If you're collecting NECA figures, man, I had this for a little bit. I just completely forgot to show it for some reason. So Walmart's right now, some of the Walmarts, there's, of course, distribution craziness with all of NECA's turtle stuff. Uh, I've seen shelves of these things posted by NECA on their Instagram uh, but luckily, one day I actually went into Walmart at the right time, and I found two of these as well. I've already A-OK'd one of them to my buddy Chad from the Comic Core because I know he's been dying to look for it. It's kind of like an AOK slash trade of some sort. I think he's sending me something. He hasn't told me what it is. But um, I finally got a freaking Super Shredder because I've been trying to go after a Super Shredder for a while. And, like, the, the first run of Super Shredders, I never saw on the shelf. Didn't even know they came out until after they did. Um, I think they were either Walmart exclusive or for a very limited window, you can order them on like the official NECA store, which is an, it's an awful website. Let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, this is one of my favorite NECA figures. Uh, probably my third favorite. Now the token, the Razor, it's still the best. Luckily I used that awful NECA store to buy those. No problem. They had a time window on that to buy those. Whereas the, the original run of this was just limited. So, yeah, very happy to get this. Now I don't have to go chase after it anymore. Uh, so, got that. Oh, Chris Barrett does know what's being sent. And then Hudat says he did get those. So, awesome, man. That's good to hear. I'm, I'm glad another fellow Turtle fan managed to get the last run in, too. So, the, the big question is, why, why am I selling all of a sudden? So, for years, if you watch my live stream, um, I don't sell too much. I, I was selling from time to time, and... Honestly, like when I was selling on the auctions a couple years ago, I really wasn't bringing out any big books. I had, if I had a double, I would try it out. Um, but at the end of the day, like the, I sold for first month or two, fairly successful. But after a while, I was starting to get into just, you know, stuff people didn't want. Let's be honest. Um, but right now, like, let's be honest, like the market is just going nuts. Like, for instance, it's like Winter Soldier has his own show. We've known. Bucky was going to have his own show with Falcon for like a year now. And all of a sudden people saw like, oh yeah, he's on his own show. His first, the, the first Winter Soldier is like $130, $150 book now. Uh, why now? <laughs> like, did, did people not realize like this show is happening? Like, it's just so weird how the market works. But anyway, like the second these characters appear, like uh, Monica Rambeau appears and all of a sudden like her giant size Captain Marvel number one, you can sell this book for like 30 to 50 bucks. It's been a dollar book for decades. Um, so it, I'd just be almost a fool not to sell some of the stuff I've been thinking about selling for years now, because like at the end of the day, like and who that you're watching now, you've been one of the guys telling me like you have enough books. Like if you want to chase after grail, you, you've got the artillery to do so. So like, you know, several people told me that in the community. And now I'm just wondering like, why am I hanging on to some of this book? I obviously the other reason is just spacing. Like I this shelf behind me, I have that shelf in that closet, and I have a matching shelf right here that matches the shelf behind me is almost just as full of short boxes. So obviously spacing is a pretty big issue for me. And I'm kind of just getting tired of inflating this collection to the point like, how big does this collection need to be? Like I like having a lot of books, don't get me wrong, but uh, it, when I'm running, when I'm dedicating this much space and I need to do more reading and less hoarding, I guess it's just like, I, I need to just kind of phase out the dollar bin buying and that stuff and start really thinking about 
what do I value in my collection and what can I let go to get these books I've only dreamt of? So I don't think I'm going to chase a Turtles one just yet. That's the one that people have kind of approached me and been like, are you chasing after a Turtles one or not? Because everybody knows I'm a turtle guy. That's no secret. So when I'm kind of slowly padding my PayPal account, um, that's the first thought that came to a couple people's minds. It's just like that book is still pretty crazy. And I don't know if, you know, I, I still feel like there's going to be a day crescendo to all of this basically. So if I'm going to get a Turtles one, I, I still think that eventually 2022, 2023, I'm really hoping things settle back down. But then again, I was incredibly wrong about 2020. I figured everything was going to flatten out because people needed money and they wouldn't be spending as much money. Little did I know everyone was going to get stimulus packages and free money and all this stuff and just spend it on comic books. So that's kind of what's happening now. So yeah, I'm trying to, exactly. Who that says, have the hobby pay for itself. That's kind of one of my goals right now. So the other grail, if you will, I guess I'm going for is, you know, and I think there's a short window on this because there's a certain HBO Max show that could ruin my chances of seeing this book for a while. And of course that grail is Showcase 22, the first appearance of Hal Jordan. Maybe my, I don't know if he's my favorite comic book character, but he sure is, he, he's up there, obviously. Like maybe one of my top favorites. So I, I feel like of all of the, you know, big DC first appearances, that Hal Jordan's is still semi affordable for whatever reason. Like it, it'd be a low grade, sure. Um, but it's not a five figure book. Like you can still get this book for like three, four, five K and in a lower to mid grade. Whereas like obviously your your Trinity's way out of sight. You're talking six figures for pretty much all those books. Flash is five figures. Because not only is that his, Barry Allen's first appearance, that's that's the start of the Silver Age. So it's historic. It's a big key. Uh, so the next in line would obviously be Hal Jordan. And then I don't – who cares about Hawkman? Sorry, Barrett. I had to throw that one out there. You know, you're a big Hawkman guy. And then it kind of just, you know, de-escalates from there, you know. I'm not going after Aquaman anytime soon either. So I feel like if, if I don't get Hal Jordan's first appearance – in the next year or so, that thing's just going to double and triple in price as well. Um, I really do feel like that's the last big affordable grail from, you know, the Silver Age first appearances. So, yeah, I mean, let's see. Chris Barrett says, Showcase 22 is a book that will still be affordable even when the show does begin. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Like I said, I'm I'm not the best source for this. That's just what I, I feel like could happen. And I don't want a chance. I just based on everything else. Like like I said, you have a, a show with Falcon and Winter Soldier. We've known this was coming for a while. And then when the show hits, all of a sudden, people are escalating these prices to double and triple and an unimaginable value. So if a Green Lantern show is put out there and people start to enjoy it and it's that good of a show, what's to say the same thing can't happen to all of those? Even though he's, it doesn't sound like he's going to be a central character, which I think is ridiculous. But like I said, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Who dat says, who would have knew that the comic books NYC bought TMNT 1 8.0 first print January 2020 would have been the last time for a great deal. Yeah, and I, I do remember. I, I saw that book in person, too. I think that's the one he had at C2E2. And I was, I was, my jaw dropped because that's the first time I think I've actually seen that book in person. So, yeah, you're not wrong, man. He Right place, right time. I, no one knew who could have called the world in January, February 2020. Um, absolutely, man. All right. So yeah, that's the main reason I'm selling is I, I think I'm, I think I am just going to say it to make it official. I'm, I'm going to go after a showcase 22, hopefully get a decent grant. I don't want like a 1.0 or 0.5. I know I can get those like today if I wanted to, but I wouldn't mind at least like three, five, four, five. And of course above that if possible. Um, so yeah, I, I got a low ball price in my head like I always do. So I'm going to go after that first, but you know, I, I may, I, I still have an entire six foot table of stuff right over here that I barely even showed on the first two claim cells. I thought about just doing like a video on this channel, make it recorded. I've seen it before where people have like a video of just dollar books and you can claim the stuff in the comments below. And then there'll be like different videos and different tiers. 
So I'm, maybe I'll try something like that, and we'll see what happens. And I've also opened up an eBay store, but I, I'm taking that with a huge grain of salt right now. See what 19 is the profile, obviously, by the way. But I have two items on there listed. I'm just going to see how that experience goes, and then I may continue to list stuff over there to, you know, just keep culling the collection at the very least, but I at least want to make sure, you know, my friends in the community get the good stuff first, um, like they have been on the last couple of claim sales. Uh, who that says also can't compare DC and Marvel shows. I would say go after showcase 22. Yeah, exactly. You're not wrong. Like why, why, why didn't doom patrol skyrocket to a bunch of money? Because that is a, it was a phenomenally done TV show. Um, same thing with, you know, the teen Titan stuff and pretty much all of the uh, DC app now HBO max shows like they're all good. Uh, but for whatever reason, they weren't good enough to make people go chase after that stuff. I feel like on the DC side, like you either a fan of those characters or you aren't at this point. So when they do put out a great quality show like Swamp Thing, most collectors like me will watch and enjoy it. But the key word is collector. We already have most of those books that we want, uh, with the exception of you know House of Secrets 92, which I don't have, which I thought about going after that one as well. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's one that one's at an all-time high as well. Seawood wants a 10.0 showcase 22. I do want a 10.0 showcase 22, but that's that's like the mortgage on my house. <laughs> so, all right. So I think that pretty much wraps up the sale talk here. So like I said, I've made segments today. So the next segment is my original art pickup. So we were talking about, you know, Kabi and his awesome purchase at C2E2 last year. I got that Turtles one. So around March, April, May, we realized that Cons aren't coming back this year. Maybe not even, you know, here in 2021. So then I started to, like, go on Facebook and some other forums and really, like, look at some original art and commission work and who could I get a commission from. Because at the end of the day, I still want to get, you know, commissions done. I want to collect original art when I can. And obviously, with no cons, there's a gigantic hurdle now to cross because that is the best source to go get original art and commissions is an artist alley con convention. Now that we didn't have artist alleys, then I was like, well, if I'm not traveling to a con, if I'm not going to spend money on, you know, amenities at a con, that's going to leave me some money to get some art at least. Cause at the end of the day, all I got to pay is a little bit extra in shipping and I can get a good quality commission still and keep those artists supported that don't have the luxury of getting an artist alley table at a con now. Um, so one of those artists was Andrew Griffith. I believe he, He's from across the pond. He's over in UK. Um, so unfortunately, we he he was still planning on coming over to New York in October for New York Comic Con because at the time we made this deal, he didn't know or we both didn't know that New York Comic Con was going to happen. We didn't have that much future sight, basically. So basically his plan was, you know, I'm going to get this sketch done for you, but then I'm going to fly to America with it and then I'm going to mail it to you. So that way we don't have to pay an arm and a leg for shipping. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a cool idea, man. Let's do that. I've seen your work. Seems like it's a good bang for your buck. I'm all good for that. So probably made this deal about May or June last year. Um, and then, of course, New York Comic Con got canceled. Um, and, of course, you know, other personal things happened in his life. So I, that's why I only hit him up once or twice just to check on the status of this commission. And eventually, I'll be honest, I just kind of put it in the back of my mind and kind of forgot about it. And then I think I realized about two or three weeks ago, like, man, you know, I, I, I have that one commission. I still haven't heard anything about. And, you know, synchronicity, I guess. Great legend show word right there. <laughs> um, he emailed me. He's like, hey, man, I'm in the States again. I got your commission. It's in full color. Shoot me the information to ship it, and it'll be yours in three days. I'm like, wow, it's April, and I got my April O'Neil. So I finally... Got this sketch from Andrew Griffith. Um, it was a it was a long way, about nine months or so, but in my opinion, pretty well worth the wait. Especially like like I said, I wasn't in a huge hurry, um, and I do still need to go buy a frame for it. I'll probably do that tomorrow. But um, absolutely love this sketch. I didn't have an April in the collection or on the wall yet, um, so I'm kind of trying to check off those turtle characters. I don't have a sketch or commission of yet, um, so I was happy to add April to that list. Now I have all four turtles. Um, an April and a Casey. I think I got a Slash Shredder. Um, probably need to get Splinter actually. So I might, I might go after Splinter next. So, um, and it was pretty much like right around that one hundred dollar mark in full color. So I, I definitely couldn't say no to a hundred bucks full color. Um, extremely happy with that. I think it 
represents the animated version pretty well. He pretty much asked me, like, do I want the animated animated version? I'm like, absolutely. Go ahead and do that. So good old Channel 6 News April right there. So this will definitely be going in my living room. Very ecstatic with that. And we got aggressively relaxing. What is going on, man? He says, definitely worth the wait. Chris Barrett says, your books are doing pretty good. I just checked on them. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. And Barry, you still need me to send, send me your address, by the way. I need to send that package still for you. Um, all right. So the last thing I was going to talk about today is, like I said, on, on the opposite end of the speculation things, it seems like every run worth collecting or every read worth getting has that big key in the middle of it that's just like skyrocketed to like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Like prime example would be like, Alan Moore Swamp Thing. I was going after that stuff. I ended up having to shell out like a few extra bucks to get that first Constantine that's right in the middle of that run. Not to mention the fact that those first couple issues are jacked up too because it's Alan Moore. It happens. So there's just those runs of books that are like, it seems like any good quality read that's long form, eventually you have like one to three books that just jack up the price of the whole run for whatever reason. Uh, so I've tried to compile a list of books that, you know, I think are pretty good reads and you can pretty much find in dollar bins because I know there's still people out there that like to build their runs in dollar bins. Like I'm one of those, obviously I have comic books everywhere. So I know with the digital stuff, I'm slowing down on that, but I know there's still people and folks out there who love to collect stuff through dollar bins. So I tried to compile a little bit. of. I just started taking stuff out of my boxes. I'm like, yep, there's really no keys in there. It's a good read. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show some books and you guys in the chat can let me know what you think of these runs, if you read them or not. And, uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get into it. Um, I wanted to pick one Wolverine series that I think it does have one key in it, but I think it's a pretty, it's an affordable key easily. Like not, there's not a lot of heat on it unless I've missed something. Uh, so the first one I wanted to highlight is Wolverine origins. Number 10 I actually have. A lot of these signs, so I got Joe Cascot, Joe Quesada um, signature on that from 2006. But I do enjoy the Wolverine Origins reads from Daniel Way. Steve Dillon of Punisher Frame does the art. Uh, so if you like the Steve Dillon Punisher Max stuff, you probably will enjoy Wolverine Origins as well. Uh, but a lot of this run has to do with Wolverine kind of going after a sword that can kill him. There's been the sword introduced um, that someone's going to use to kill wolverine he cannot heal from a cut from the sword and if you like nuke from daredevil born again he is one of the characters featured in this run as well uh the main reason there is one affordable key is you do get the first dakin wolverine son in there there's a variant that people look for so that variant kind of i think offsets some of the costs that would get to get this whole run and there's a couple appearances from Deadpool where every time Deadpool and Wolverine fight, people like to pay money for that. But that has calmed down quite a bit over the last few years. So for the most part, um, besides maybe paying a couple extra dollars for issue 10, you can pretty much find most of the series for a dollar um, or less. The first issue might set you back like two or three bucks. I think I actually have a store uh, now away from it is still selling this exact issue for like two or three bucks. Um, and then also shout out to the Jason Aaron Wolverine Weapon X which I think took place a couple years after this. Uh, but you get some great Jason Aaron Wolverine action in that as well. And I was just telling uh, Comic Corp Chad the other day, there's a great story um, in that run. I think it's issue 13, uh, where Nightcrawler got killed off during Second Coming. And it's just a good eulogy issue to Nightcrawler, basically, that you know, starring Wolverine, obviously. So I definitely recommend getting that run as well if you like cheap Wolverine runs. Uh, the next one, and I continue to find this issue one uh, for like 25 cents. <laughs> I think it was just so overprinted um, that it's it's definitely cheap, but it's a good quality read as well. I think it's some it's some top quality Scott Snyder writing. And like I said, Scott Snyder had been the most consistent writer in the last couple of years. The death metal stuff, I just and it's just like I just did not dig those runs. But I would say witches. Uh, is some good quality Scott Snyder. So this is the type of Snyder I want to read. Plus, he's paired up with his buddy Jock. And it's only a six-issue run, too, which most of the issues you can actually find for a dollar or less. Like I said, I think I've actually picked up another bundle of these and given, given them to a friend for all 20 cents a piece. So 
Um, very easily attainable, which is uh, one through six. Uh, but yeah, it's just a great read. Of uh, you know, it's like a a family that lives next to this crazy woods with some scary trees. It turns out those trees have been possessed by witches and there's like all kinds of crap going on. Now they want this guy's daughter and it takes off from there. So, and then jocks art is really what makes this book in my opinion. So I do recommend this one. And I tried to go an X-Men book. I think pe most people out there know the X-Men reads to go after at this point, or I've talked about them at verbatim, but uh, one I did want to highlight, it's actually not even technically X-Men, but it's X-Factor. Uh, any Peter David X Factor, really, uh, I would recommend. And most of Peter David's work, for whatever reason, ends up in the dollar bins. And especially once you get to the Messiah Complex era in X Factor, uh, there's a lot of good reads here and a lot of good utilization of characters, too. Like you get Monet, um, Strong Guy, you eventually get Layla Miller worked in there as a main character, um, Siren, um, Richter's in there, long shots eventually thrown in there, Shatterstar. Um, and then, of course, uh, the star of the book, and one of my boys because of this run, Jamie Madrix, the multiple man. Like, in my opinion, this book makes Madrox for me. Like, I, I, I was never a big Jamie Madrox fan, but once I read this, I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. And of course, Wolf Spain's on the cover. Wolf, Wolf Spain, pretty big key to this book as well. Uh, so a lot of cool, you know, just underutilized characters for the most part that Peter David pretty much just swooped them all up and made a book out of them. And then you eventually get Quicksilver on House of M. Um, that's probably like the one detractor of this book. Like anytime there's a big crossover, like they made Peter David write an issue that crossed over with the big crossover. And he, he did a pretty decent job, honestly. Like I heard him complain in articles back in the day about the crossover aspect. Um, but I think... You know, Peter David's a strong enough writer that he reacted to it really well with the characters he was given. Uh, but yeah, I do, whether it's the first run X Factor or this, I think technically second run, volume two, uh, Peter David's X Factor, some of his best work for sure. Let's see, Gretzky says, I need to read all of the Marvel Inferno issues. Yes, I do, actually. I still need to read that, which I do have one more note after I get done with all these books. I got <laughs> it's a topic heavy show tonight, but. I had a lot on my mind after work today for a reason, so I'll just I'll I'll get it all out there. And Chris Barrett likes Wolfsbane, yeah, absolutely. Um, this is kind of a shame that that uh, New Mutants movie didn't take off because I think Micey Williams could have made a great Wolfsbane further in the franchise. Uh, the next one, which I've talked about several times here, of course, too. Um, that's fifty-two. Um, of course, there are fifty-two issues of this, plus a couple spinoffs, plus the World War Three miniseries that took place during week 50, but pretty much with the exception of maybe week 9, week 11, because the Batwoman appearances, which even those are finding their ways back into cheap bins because Ruby Rose decided she didn't want to do the character anymore, so all of a sudden there's been a huge cooldown with the only key issues in this. You can pretty much still find this entire run for a dollar fifty cents or less because there's so many of them. It's daunting to try to collect entire weekly series so because of that you'll eventually find a lot of these in 25 cent bins or less even so i know like my 20 cent bins at half price books over here there's usually almost always 52 issues in those bins so but don't sleep on the good quality read here like you get a lot of great characters basically i've, I've explained i'll just explain it one more time the premise of this is you get four of the biggest writers at the time together they come together and they decide they get a pool of characters that DC definitely does not use enough of, or like in Greg Ruckus' case, he pretty much almost recreated the character in his own run and wanted to rope it into here, like Renee Montoya, and he wanted to evolve that character. So it's just like characters like no one's really attached to, uh, but they really want to do something special with. So you get Booster Gold in here, uh, which Barrett, I know you're still watching. If you like Booster Gold, man you have to read 52. Like there, there's some phenomenal booster gold stuff in this, that Jeff Johns, I'm pretty sure writes probably with some help from Mark Wade too. Cause he was like the nineties DC writer. Uh, but you get both questions. So you get to see the rise of Renee Montoya is the question. You get to see the fall of Vic Sage is the question. Uh, you get to see elongated man react to the death of his wife and how he's coping with life after Sue Dibney. Basically it's a very heartbreaking story there but it's a good comeback story as well. You even get to see some Cassie Sandsmark's uh, Wonder Girl deal with the death of Connor Kent's Superboy. 
which that's roped in to the elongated man stuff. And then you get to see John Henry Irons and his niece. Uh, his niece is really obsessed with trying to be a superhero to the point when Lex Luthor introduces a superhero initiative and creates a program and a serum. Um, she wants to sign up for it. And, uh, Steel's like, no, it's Lex Luthor. It's going to be bad. Guess what? It was bad. And then the other like underlying story in here that the characters aren't even on the front of the cover is the Lost in Space characters, which those are a lot of fun too. You get Animal Man, you get Adam Strange, and you get Starfire. I could read a whole book of just those three characters lost in space. That that was fun enough in itself as well. And I feel like there's one more character I'm kind of forgetting about, but yeah, if it's like it, oh well, of course Black Adam. Duh, the Black Adam stuff is. I'm pretty sure like. I hate to say because I wanted to make this not about speculation, but once that Rock Black Adam hits, and if they franchise that thing, like you could see a little bit of heat on some of these 52s just based on the Black Adam stuff because this is Black Adam heavy as well. Um, so, yeah. Chris Barrett says no mention of the Black Adam stuff. So, there you go. I mentioned Black Adam. The whole World War III revolves around Black Adam. So, there you go. So read 52. If Buffy fans out there, you should know about this one. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, season eight. So when the series ended, it ran seven seasons. Uh, but I guess Joss Whedon still had one story to tell. And somehow they dragged it into like 12 comic book seasons. But this is where it all started. Uh, season eight, issue one. And I think it ran for 40 issues. It was a decent run. It's a bit dated at this point. Like I said, they, they name a character Twilight, who turns out to be another character from the Buffy mythos before the Twilight franchise was a thing. And it just happened to be a vampire as well in this book. So that was a little bit weird. Um, but, you know, Joss Whedon, I know he's not, there's he, he's kind of being scrutinized right now, but I like to remember him for his decent quality writing on shows like Buffy and, you know, his X-Men run. So because of stuff like that, you can still find even this issue, number one, first print for a dollar. Um, so it can easily be chased after and collected. Um, I don't think there's, I think the only probably other kind of key that you'd find in here, people just cover buying things or I think it's around issue 30. There's a pretty cool Adam Hughes C cover, which I've even found that for a dollar a couple times and a okayed it. <laughs> so, uh, pretty much you can get probably 40 issues, for 40 bucks on this one. Uh, the people who are really chasing after this run for the collection purposes, they're going after the Dark Horse Library Edition. So the single issues are easily attainable and worth chasing after as well. And I know this is a bit of a weird one, uh, but it's just some people think this is uh, a higher dollar key, but it's not. You can find this book all day for cheap. Uh, and that's Superman, Man of Steel. I mean, not even Man of Steel. It's just a doomsday death and reign of Superman run. Some of those books are barely worth the paper they're printed on, according to collectors. But at the end of the day, it's a fun story. Like once you go from the death of Superman, which is obviously action and splash panel heavy to the point where it's just all single plate, single page splash panels uh, to the funeral for a friend stuff where you get to really know some of these other characters in Metropolis, obviously explore Lois and Jimmy, and Perry White, but you also get to see characters like Bibbo react to his death and you get to see the Justice League licking their wounds, reacting to the death of Superman uh, there's a lot of good stuff there. Of course, the reign of the Superman. You get the introduction of great characters like Connor Kent, Superboy, Steel. You get the reinvention of Cyborg Superman. And he's been a, a legendary character ever since. And then you get Eradicator, which who cares about Eradicator? And then that stems off into the whole Emerald Twilight. And they reinvent Hal Jordan and introduce Kyle Rayner around that. So there's a lot of really cool stuff. But none of those books break the bank unless you're looking for like limited DC Universe fifth printings so you can still pretty much get all this stuff for a dollar um so i definitely recommend chasing those down for any halfway interested interested superman fan and then i'll show off just any ultimate stuff right now like especially your first run ultimate stuff like brian bendis's spider-man like up to 100 um the ultimates mark millar volume one and two and then the Mark Millar X-Men stuff, which I think that ran for about 34 issues. Like, if you cannot go wrong reading that stuff. And pretty much, like, even this one, I think, seeing a little bit of heat, I just had it out for sale over it because I have two or three copies of this um, that I found for a dollar. That's the whole point. You can still find this for a dollar if you dig deep enough. 
Um, and even the first issue, that's the biggest one that was seeing heat previously. And now that is easily attainable. The first issue of Ultimate Spider-Man. But you can still find the Ultimates volume on dollar, no problem. Uh, I've just found and gave to my buddy Mike of the Comics of the Atom podcast. I found him a 20-cent copy of Ultimate X-Men number one. So you can find these really easy. Pretty much the Ultimate stuff doesn't see major heat until the Miles Morales first appearance. That is... That's skyrocketed, obviously. So that's not part of this conversation, but you can't go wrong starting to run collect and run fill the ultimate stuff. And even Ultimate Fantastic Four, not too bad. Uh, you get the ultimate uh, Reed Richards becomes the maker. You get to see his genesis and the evil, and then you get to see the Marvel Zombies introduction. I'll start speeding this up because I'm almost at an hour. Uh, Teen Titans. Pretty much the only issue of the Teen Titans, Jeff John stuff, they'll set you back. It's probably the first issue, and it's still like a $5 issue. Like, it's not that – and there's multiple printings of it, too, um, and they're not too hard to find. Like, I've seen the – the not the Turner cover, but the one before that. I think it's a third printing. Uh, it's still pretty easy to find in dollar bins from time to time. And then, like, the, at least that first arc, issue one through six, great quality arc. It's not going to break the bank whatsoever. 50 cents to a dollar an issue. Uh, but this is where Jeff Johns really decided, you know, I know Barrett said he didn't like younger versions of Justice League or T um, uh, Avengers. I would say, like, for me, this is the run to collect if you want to change your mind on that mindset. Like, they really took those young Justice characters and decided to reinvent them and grow them up. And you really get to see, you know, they reinvent Connor. He's all of a sudden a, a clone of Superman and Lex Luthor. So it adds a, a new wrinkle to that character. You get to see Impulse become Kid Flash, and he, he decides to become an adult, basically, before your very eyes. Like, almost literally, he's he stops, like, goofing off, and he's just like, I need to live up to my legacy, finally. And then you get to see Tim Drake crapple with the fact that, like, he is, he's becoming Batman, like, whether he wants to or not. He doesn't want to become Batman, but just the way he works and operates, that's, that's Batman. So he actually does realize that. And then pretty much like you rock to these three characters is Cassie Wonder Girl. She's like the most level-headed one because all these other three guys are going through all these other issues that Cassie, she's going through her issues. Yeah, but at the end of the day, like by the time you get to issue 100, she's the leader of the team because <laughs> she's she is literally the foundation of these other characters. So really cool stuff here. Like if you just want to see like a long run comic where, they're not just maintaining the continuity of the characters for the sake of maintaining the continuity. They actually add wrinkles to existing characters and make them a lot more interesting. Definitely recommend Teen Titans. Um, my next one, and I don't, it surprises me to this day that these are dollar books. Um, the Grant Morrison Animal Man. Like I've, this is like my fourth or fifth copy. I can't leave this in dollar bins. I have to pick it up every time I see it. And I see it quite often. Um, so, I can't recommend this enough. I think I've talked about it enough times on this channel. You see it for a dollar. At least you're going to get a nice Brian Boland cover. They're all Brian Boland covers. They're awesome. Story on the inside. Yeah, it starts off a bit slow. Uh, but once you get to that like last act of Morrison's arc, it is awesome. Especially like considering the post-crisis DC climate. Um, they do a lot of cool things post-crisis, in my opinion. And then that last couple issues is just complete insanity from Grant Morrison, but it's for the best at that point. So I can't recommend this run enough. I don't know what else I can say on my channel to make you guys want to read this run if you haven't already. Uh, and in that same vein, the first issues of my wall, so I pulled out the second issue, Jeff Lemire's Animal Man. Like, But probably the sequel to this is realistically this. Even though this book kept going after Morrison, I feel like this is almost like the true follow-up or sequel that was intended for Morrison's run. Plus, if you like Scott Snyder, we talked about his witches run. Scott Snyder had that swamp thing run, and this book eventually crosses over beautifully with the uh, Scott Snyder swamp thing, where you have this whole idea of the red and the green crossing over and becoming this like big war going on between the two elements. And then you have Animal Man and Swamp Thing just caught in the middle of it. So there's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, we were talking about Green Lantern earlier. I decided to go with the Jeff Johns Green Lantern. Like I said, a lot of Jeff Johns stuff on here, but for whatever reason, a lot of the stuff still can be found really cheap. Uh, probably your only biggest key in this, I would say, um, 
well, I guess you got that final issue that people are looking at now with Jessica Cruz. Uh, but you also have Green Lantern 25, uh, which has that book. It's probably a matter of time before that goes really big because you have, I think, first Lar Fleas, uh, first pretty much all the Red Lantern's first appearances in there. And then just in general, the color spectrum is introduced. So you have a lot of first going on in that book. But it's also the conclusion of the Sinestro Corps storyline, which is my favorite of all the Jeff Johns Green Lantern stuff. So I would say of all the things I show on this list, I would definitely go after this first if you're thinking about just going after a run uh, because it's, I think it's a matter of time once they introduce the HBO Max show, if it actually goes on for seasons two, three, four, they're really going to pay close attention to the, the, the color spectrum stuff, the Sinestro core, and that's if that catches heat, you can take this off this list. <laughs> Uh, and then the last two are kind of deeper cuts. Uh, I got I picked out The Wicked and The Divine. Uh, I still think this book is severely underrated in the community. I absolutely love the read. I think it's a cool concept of like, you know, Greek godhood meets teenage angst meets rock star, basically. And the, the ultimate catch to all this is they only have like two years to live, basically. And I pulled out this specific issue because I only paid $1.50 for it. So like, Issue one, you can get for $1.50 and find the rest of them for a similar price. And it's a great quality read. Karen Gillen, um, for my opinion, for the most part, you can't go wrong with Karen Gillen. Plus, you get Jamie McKelvey, I think, is his best tag partner in terms of writer-artist partnership space. I think that's his best artist in his wheelhouse. So, for the most part, he does almost every issue until, like, volume two. Uh, then he brings in all of his other friends. Like I think I feel like Jim Bartell did an issue Tua Lote got brought in to do an issue. There's a lot of cool artists that came in to do an issue because they liked the story of Volume 1. They wanted to contribute to Volume 2. So a lot of cool stuff in Wicked and Divine. The final book we'll show tonight, um, Uber from Karen Gillen as well. This is from Avatar Press. Don't hear anyone talking about this one at all. So I was like, well, I was digging this out. This was close to it. Um, so this is kind of like another alternate interpretation of like, you know, World War II culture, basically. So, like, what if the Nazis got the super serum instead of America, basically? So, it's kind of like a catch on the Captain America story where, you know, they made him the super soldier. Like, what if the Nazis could create their own super soldiers? And this is that story. Like, there's one that just kills people with lightning powers, basically. And you can imagine the damage they're going to do. Oh, yeah, I have this signed by Karen Gill, and I completely forgot. I <laughs> just saw the reflection of the gold signature right there. So it, it's a cool, if you like alternate, you know, war history, this is kind of a cool book with the superhero twist, obviously, and a super villain twist. So it's just like you get to see this, you know, what's left of America band together and try to figure out, like, how are they going to fight supervillains without superheroes? Um, so a lot of cool stuff going on in this book. I need to actually finish this entire run at some point. I think I have the first two or three volumes uh, in single issue form. Uh, just a random fun run. If you Occasionally I see this in dollar bins. Um, but yeah, I recommend it if you guys see it. Definitely check out the first issue. I think there was actually an issue zero first, and then it's issue one. But I think the issue zero was like C2E2 exclusive, and they think they reprinted it in the trades. So just in case you reread it, you probably want to find issue zero first. Uh, but that pretty much just about does it. Uh, for tonight, tonight's live stream. But like I said, uh, let me know like what you guys think about the idea of me maybe doing a claim video, basically. I think I've tried it once or twice before, but I feel like I need more books gone. <laughs> I just feel like I have way too many books over there. I just inherited my childhood collection again. So that's like four or five more totes of books on top of what I already have, on top of accumulating stuff that I tried to sell for a dollar at my parents' antique shop and got that back as well. So all of a sudden I have comic books in my living room. They're just on the couch and that stuff. And I need to move some stuff. <laughs> so if you guys are looking for anything specific, once again, let me know. Maybe I don't have it. Maybe I do. You never know. Just shoot me up with some offers. So uh, hopefully I'll hear from you guys. And once again, shout out to the people who uh, caught our first two live sales on the Comic Core channel. We had a lot of fun doing those. And hopefully if you haven't got your package yet, uh, definitely hit me up. I think I've seen that every one of mine was delivered. Maybe minus one yesterday. I was going to check after this feed to make sure it got safely delivered today. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. But until then, of course, I don't have the banner loaded up.
<laughs> Barrett says, one dollar for box K. On that note, we'll just keep going.